So this is the second lecture for our first week in Biology 106. I wanted to talk about prokaryotic structure a little bit more, and this would generally be speaking about bacteria. So when we look at prokaryotes or pr prokaryotic cells, we need to remember that the DNA is not enclosed in a membrane. Remember that would be what would differentiate these from eukaryotes. And most of the prokaryotes or prokaryotic cells have sturdy cell walls that are made up of peptidoglycan. And this gives it its structure. And often when we look at bacteria, we look at how they react to dyes and whether they're gram positive or gram negative. And it's because of these cell walls that we can differentiate bacteria. Their organelles are not complex and they're not membrane bound. Remember, it's the membrane bound that separates them from the eukaryotic cells. And these include all the bacteria and archaea, which are a little bit different, but mainly what we're going to be looking at in this class is bacteria. So the majority of our normal biome, the normal flora that resides on the outside of our body and also in areas inside our body is made up of bacterial cells. And when we start looking at bacteria, it's important to understand how they're named. Bacteria are named using the genus and species name. So I have an example here. The first name of it is the genus name, and it's always capitalized. And then that second name is always lowercase, and it is the species. For example, this is Echeshirai coli and is known commonly as E. coli. And I just realized I have a typo. There should be an A here. But when you're looking at bacteria, don't worry about the pronunciation. You'll get more familiar with them as we go along, and you'll be able to recognize uh, different ones and ones that are more commonly found in our normal biome. So when we talk about the cell structure of a bacterial cell, when we look at bacteria, all bacteria have a cell or cytoplasmic membrane inside of that wall. They have bacterial chromosome or nucleoid, which is the genetic material that they hang on to. They will all have ribosomes, which allow them to make their own proteins. They will have what is called an actin cytoskeleton. It's like an inner framework or webbing that keeps everything in place. And then cytoplasm, remember, this is that viscous gel-like substance that everything in the inside of the cell is, is sitting in. Now, in some bacteria, you may find other appendages or other parts. Um, I'll go through these, but know that they're not found in every bacterial cell. So fimbriae, these are a type of kind of hair-like feature. Outer membranes, cell wall. So some bacteria do not have a cell wall. This is how we differentiate them. There's something called a pilus or pilus. I'll show you a picture in just a second. Some of them will form a capsule. And then also inside of a bacterial cell, sometimes you'll see an inclusion or granule. Plasmid is another way of having DNA or genetic material in it. Flagellum, this is used for motility, movement. And then sometimes bacteria can form endospores, which allow them to make it through a very harsh conditions. This is a picture of the actual bacterial cell, and you'll see that it has the different features that you either always find or sometimes will find on a bacteria. So take some time and look this over. And then the last part of this, I want to talk about how we describe prokaryotes or how we describe bacteria. Since most of them are independent, single-celled or unicellular organisms, we like to do the morphology of an individual cell. They can also, however, act as a group, and in the group they will have a morphology also. So this gives the range in size from 0.2 to 750 microns. They're very small, and as I said, shape of the bacteria is one of the most important ways to describe them. So this last table you can take a look at, and when you figure out what your pet microbe is, this is one of the things that in your introduction you'd want to go into is the bacterial shape. So at the top we have what look like little spheres. These are called coccus or cocci, plural. The next one then we have what are shaped like rods, and they're called bacillus or bacilli, which is the plural. Vibrio, these are a little bit more unusually shaped than the bacilli. We also have spirillium. This is kind of this uh, corkscrew-ish. Then we have spirochets, and these are even more so, and they're longer. 
and then the last one would be branching filaments. So I mainly just want you to get an idea of the different types of shapes. You don't need to memorize all of these, but what you do want to do is once we've got your pet microbe assigned, these are the things that you're going to start taking into account for your signature assignment and putting together the project on your actual pet microbe. So I hope this helped. If you have questions, once again, you can always email me or instant message me during office hours.